I'm Jay Menon and welcome to Stadium Unplugged, the show in which we get to the heart of Asian and international sports personalities. And we do that in a very unconventional kind of way, digging deeper below the usual questions about sports stats and achievements. This time around, a best-selling football author whose controversial books have ruffled feathers within the sports establishment. In 2011, his novel Match Fixer was voted Football Book of the Year in the UK. And in 2012, his his latest release was top of the charts in Singapore for more than two months. Hailing from a working class background in London, but now living the dream in Singapore, it's welcome to author Neil Humphreys. Now, people say you're the best known <laughs> foreigner in Singapore, so I'm really glad to have you here. But you're like, you know, every time I speak to you, you're, you're shy, you hate the limelight. How do you deal with that then? I live in a box. <laughs> I just have this little box that my wife covers me over every night. No, I, I'm a hermit. I'm a writer. Writers are hermits. We just sit in a little cubicle all day and we write and write. Everyone thinks it's sexy. It's the least sexy job <laughs> on the planet, but it's one I love. So, Okay, now I want to talk about, you know, you growing up because, mm. you know, of course, there's lots of stories about, you know, you grew up in a very rough neighbourhood, apparently. The, Dagenham. The poverty, how rough, the poverty. How rough was it? This feels yes. like a therapy session already. <laughs> I'm going to be crying. My mother never fed why, me. Why do you think we give you the comfortable chairs and all that? <laughs> no. you know, just get you comfortable to open up. You it's know. great. OK, so what was it like, your childhood? It was a funny childhood. There was always lots of laughter in the house. My mother constantly made fun of my gangly physical appearance. <laughs> you know, she christened me Olive Oil from the earliest stage. So she always said, where's Popeye? Where's Popeye Olive Oil? Go and get Popeye. So there was lots of self-deprecating humour mm -hmm. in my household, which I think came across comes across in all my books. Uh, my, mom, my mother constantly made fun of me in a, in a light-hearted way. She always told jokes. There was always stories. I mean, I remember she, she made a funny football story about me. We went to see a charity game once, a local charity game, and Martin Peters, the former West Ham in England, you know, World Cup winning footballer, a hero of mine, my mother said, go and get his autograph, go and get his autograph. So I dashed over, and then at the last minute, I got a fit of fear. I became really shy. And so I went to shake his hand, but as I panicked, I went for the hand that was holding his sports bag. So what turned out to what was supposed to be a handshake became a mugging <laughs> because I grabbed the wrong hand and I ended up grabbing the hand that was holding the sports bag oh my and started pulling it. And he's thinking, this Dagenham kid is trying to mug me. So he, this World Cup winning footballer, hero of mine, West Ham and England and Tottenham, starts pulling this bag away from me and my mum is crying with laughter. <laughs> she doesn't try and apologise. She doesn't apologise to Mr Peters. She just stands there and watch me trying to mug a World Cup winning footballer. That's my mother. And that's the kind of man zany household that I grew up in. I don't even know where to start <laughs> with that one. I mean, you know, you're full of stories. Okay, now I'm going to pick up on the fact that you're a big West Ham fan. Mm. Um, your area where you grew up produced quite a lot of uh, mm. big names in football. Mm. So how come your name is not up there? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The, the street I was born in, uh, and I use it as my hotmail address to this day, the street I was born in was the same street as Sir Alf Ramsey, you know, uh, England's only World Cup winning manager. He was born just a, a stone's throw away from where I grew up. Uh, Bobby Moore, Trevor Brookin, Tony Adams, John Terry. I have quite a lot in common with John Terry, but not in a good way. No, I'm just kidding. So a lot of these players, Tony Adams, uh, Tony Cotty was just up the road. Everyone in Malaysia knows Tony Cotty. So, you know, I, there was a strong footballing background from where I grew up. And I played for the same junior team uh, as John Terry, but that was as far as my talent <laughs> went. As I, it's true, as I got a bit older, I played for my father's uh, pub team, mm -hmm. right, and he put me on as right back and I was up against a load of 50-year-old pot-bellied guys mm -hmm. who could barely run. I was so dreadful at right back that in the second half, <laughs> you heard the manager shout, target the left wing, he's the weak link. Oh my he's gosh. the weak link. So I actually became the weak link of my father's pub team. So I wasn't even good enough for my oh father's no. pub team. So if you can't play, right. That's the next best thing, you know? So I still get to go to all the games. I just write about them instead of playing in them. I see. So it was the next best thing for you then? Well, yeah. I mean, that was all I could really do. You know, I, I was... Mm -hmm. I mean, teachers and so on told me from a fairly early age I was pretty good at writing. Mm -hmm. I seemed to have a knack mm -hmm. for it, a talent, if you will. So, uh, you know, as I grew up, I won various prizes for poetry and mm -hmm. prose and, and all the rest of it. So writing was a natural progression mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, lo and behold, that poor idiot kid who was mugging Martin Peters <laughs> two decades later, was signing copies of his book for famous footballers. Oh. So, you know, so it's like I'd come full circle. In fact, my book 
uh, you mentioned Match Fixer earlier. Mm -hmm. One of my proudest things about Match Fixer, mm -hmm. it's a book that's, it's a global book. It's set in uh, London, Australia, mm -hmm. Malaysia, and Singapore. Mm -hmm. But I launched the book in London, mm -hmm. next door to Upton Park, mm -hmm. West Ham. So, you know, there's this poor kid, and I don't want you getting the violins out, but there's this poor kid who didn't have enough money mm -hmm. to go to watch West Ham when he was a kid. So I used to, I worked two jobs when I was 11 years old. I had two part-time jobs. I was like Oliver Twist <laughs> of Essex, right? So this Oliver Twist is working two part-time jobs to watch the football, to save up to watch the football. And then you fast forward 20, 25 years, and I have my London book launch opposite the mecca oh of, of the English Premier League for me, you know, with Tony Cotty endorsing my book, you know, on the front cover. So it was wonderful to start with that poor kid and then become the best-selling football author. I was very proud of that. I'm gonna start, I mean, you know, you're so passionate about, you know, where you come from and just the history, the football, but you up and left right after university for mm. what was supposed to be, I think, a trip to Asia, which ended up being a 10-year stay <laughs> in Asia and even longer now that yeah. you're back. Yep. You know, how did that happen? Uh, I ran out of money. <laughs> That's the, no, my, it's true. My, my grandmother still says this. She's 93 years old and she lives near Upton Park, funnily enough. And uh, I, I told her, Nan, you know, I'm going away for a three-month three trip. I got mm -hmm. a so, what you call a social visit pass mm -hmm. and uh, it's a holiday. Mm -hmm. And 10 years later, she said, kids today, 10 years holiday. In my <laughs> day, it was a one-day trip to the seaside. Now you kids are so sport, you get 10 years. But I just fell in love with Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a very hard country to leave, you know, mm -hmm. it was a very hard place to leave. I mean, I grew up in Dagenham, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing ex exciting mm -hmm. or sexy ever happens in Dagenham. You come to this part of the world, <laughs> you've got wild boars and orangutans oh and Malay gosh. crocodiles and monkeys. You know, in, in Dagenham, a zebra crossing is about as exciting <laughs> as we had for wildlife. You know, what we had was zebra crossings and stray dogs. So it was such a sexy part of the world to live in. And I was only 21, 22 when I, when I first came to Southeast Asia that I just stayed. I just stayed for 10 years. It was a very hard place to leave. And, and it just happened, you know. I started writing mm -hmm. columns, turned into features, turned into books, turned mm -hmm. into best-selling books. And before I knew it, I was on this whirlwind international tour but promoting these books. You started out as a drama teacher, though, and then Don't went to journalism. Don't I have to tell everyone that, because that was, you know, the, the one thing that stood out. <laughs> drama teacher. Yes. You know, I'm looking at you. You've got the flair for drama. <laughs> yes, I don't have the look, And comedy. Though. Well, yeah. you do, come on. Thanks for radio. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was a drama teacher in Singapore and it was a real challenge um, because uh, without stereotyping, Singaporean children mm -hmm. are not the most extroverted mm -hmm. and are not the most outgoing in mm -hmm. some cases. So it was a real challenge to, to get them. And we would often talk about football. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a cliched fallback, mm -hmm. but it's true. We often talked about football because it was a great icebreaker. Yeah. You know, if I want to get an instant laugh in any classroom in Southeast Asia, I just say, who do you support? Man U. Who do you support? Liverpool. And then they'll say, sir, who do you support? West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> who is going to support West Ham? Like it's a punchline. So oh. it was a great icebreaker. And uh, yeah, the drama thing, I, I was putting on productions. I was, I was mm -hmm. uh, directing productions. It was a very eclectic, unusual lifestyle, but loved every minute of it. Loved it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, ahead on Stadium Unplugged. Either way, they're making money from the game. See, I told you, I told you, look, look, look how much money you could have won. I told you, I told you. Weren't you afraid at any one point because, you know, some parts were based on real-life events that you would get into a lot of trouble with these people? Because